Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Audio bandwidth for the Daily Gizwiz is provided by Winamp. Subscribe to the Daily Gizwiz and all your favorite podcasts with the ultimate media player. Download it for free at winamp.com. Video bandwidth for the Daily Gizwiz is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. It's time for the Daily Gizwiz with Mad's maddest writer, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1233 for Wednesday, December 1st, 2010. We go look. The Daily Gizwiz is brought to you by MailRoute, a secure hosted service with enterprise-grade virus and spam filtering for companies of any size. For more information and to save 10%, visit MailRoute.info. And now, get ready for Dick. Wednesday, who needs a theme? It's Wednesday. I don't have a Wednesday song, really. I could sing the Monday song over again. No! Theme Tree Wednesday, the show you cannot hump. There's no way. The day, day when there's no theme. theme. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, the star of our show. Dick Cat's Butt Coffee Di Bartolo. <laughs> Are you still drinking that stuff? I am still drinking Cat's. Actually, it's, excuse the profanity, ladies and gentlemen. I don't, yes. I don't want to say that because it's children listening. Yes. But this is a coffee that has been extruded from the behind of a civet cat it is made in Sumatra. Look, I even have a certificate of authenticity. Uh, it was sent to me by a listener. He's actually a software designer. His uh, his his name is Troy Moret. I you know I should save this for uh, maybe next turn the tables Tuesday. I'll read you the whole story of cat butt coffee. Mm hmm. I should make it a turn the table Tuesday gadget. Yeah. What do you use for a filter? Brillo pants? <laughs> yeah, something disinfecting. Just in case? From Lysol. Just... <laughs> yeah. We'll talk about it uh, next turn the oh, table wow. Tuesday. So, yeah. But I just, if I wanted to warn you, I've been drinking that. So if I seem oh, like, if I have to word. get up and go all of a sudden, now yeah. you, you'll know why. Unbelievable. How's that studio thing coming, by the way? I'm so excited about that. Well, uh, Lisa says it's 9010 now. And actually, by the time it's you hear that hot, yeah, yeah. <laughs> by the time, yeah, well, it's got heat and AC. By you, by the way, it's got built-in central air conditioning and heat. So the next wow. time, next time you come out here, probably we'll be in it, and uh, you will be able to to do the Gizwiz in comfort. Wow, I want yeah, I want to come to the opening. If you have like a formal kind oh, we of, should. Opening. we should we should have a uh, a studio opening, shouldn't we? Opening, yeah. And you know what you should do? What? You should build a guest room. Well, we have so the the building that we're looking at. Yeah. It's an old furniture uh, uh, warehouse, and I think a factory. And um, it, then it was a drugstore for many years. A software company, which shall remain nameless, bought it, tricked it out. It was one of those dot com things where they tricked it oh, out, yeah. and it's got you know it's wiring and Ethernet everywhere. It's really great, big wow. server room. Uh, I mean, it's wonderful. And uh, then the rent went through the roof. They couldn't stay there. It was too big for them. So they've moved. It's been vacant for a couple of years. And so the rent's been tumbling. And to the point now, I've been eyeing this place for a year and a half. Dane was the first one to say, hey, you know, we should really move in that place down the road there. Because it's on the same street. Wow. It's just down the street. It's two blocks away from here. So, uh, which is one of the reasons I like it because I love our neighborhood. You know, you when the... when the But don't forget when I was out there, Dane and I were the two that would go there late at night and pretend that the place was haunted. And we'd hide it's and we'd make you. all kinds of yeah, Thank weird you. sounds to get the real estate value down. Well, how many square feet do you have in the gadget warehouse? <laughs> a hundred. A hundred? Yeah. Okay, a hundred. And this building itself... Maybe 120. 120. This building itself, the, the, the Twit Cottage, is about 2,000 square feet. Maybe a little less. 1,400. I don't know. It's small. It's a cottage. There's an upstairs and a downstairs, but it's a small cottage. Uh, this place has, get ready for this, two stories. I mean, there's a basement and then there's the main floor where the studios and the offices would be. The, the main floor is 9,400 square feet. And there's a 10,000 square foot basement. So it's almost 20,000 square feet. Ooh. So if you ever want to move the gadget warehouse, 
Yeah. <laughs> we could we could accommodate a few gadgets. You wouldn't even notice. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's here somewhere. I was say, Lee, I forgot what corner is the gadget warehouse in. But I'm probably jinxing it. I shouldn't be talking about it at all. Yeah, don't, we haven't, yeah, we haven't okay. signed the deal and but but the what what the reasoning is uh, th uh that we've just outgrown the, the, the we can't do a you know we need a bigger studio we're doing this all in a studio that that's really about 13 it's about as big as the, the gadget warehouse the warehouse right it's about 13 by 10 feet and uh and uh it was really designed just for me and so now we've got many shows in here. We could pour Tom Merritt has to do TNT in here. We have studio audience. It's just jammed. And so I think a bigger studio would be really an improvement. Oh, I think it's great. And, and an I office. don't need that much stuff in my dressing room when I come out. There. Oh, dressing room. That's a good idea. Mm. We need the dressing room. So this, I don't know what we need. There's a couple of things we need. We need, uh, we need a name for it. What do we call it? It's not a cottage anymore. No, and Twitch Factory doesn't have any ring to it. How about Twitch well, Studios? Twitch what about the Twitch Studios? It's kind of Twitch it's kind of generic. I was thinking the Leo Laporte Building. Oh, there's already three of those. Yeah, be confusing. Most of the yeah, buildings in Petaluma are named that actually. <laughs> uh, somebody what? said, "Oh, don't move. It'll change. You know, you guys will be you. Uh, one of the reasons we love you is you're so small time." Oh, well, they, they think well, we're going to change? No, we are going to be just as place. just as small time as ever. I promise you. Oh yeah, yeah. no. <laughs> I remember one, a lady once came to visit Med, and and she knocked on the door, and she came in, and she said, "I said, I I know you're looking around, and you're thinking the place is a dump." And, and she <laughs> said, "Wait a minute, no, I was terrified that it was going to be all stainless steel and industrial carpeting. This is what I hoped Mad would be, <laughs> a dump. Dick, Dick, yeah. I hear the doorbell. I know. My, my uh, 5 o'clock guest must be very, very late. Do you, but, well, uh, go, go get it. Go get it. We'll no, because no, no. No, I want to uh, play that song. Go oh, ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Getting it. Getting it. This is my favorite part of the show. to play that i know okay well my guest did get in dennis did let him in so i didn't have to get up from oh, my good. chair do you need but a bigger no, studio to too again. you need a bigger uh, place too yeah well you know I, i'm so jealous of you i'm doing like a mini mini re renovation at disneyland uh. and that's that i've been looking around i got oh, liz getting all this space and i'm looking in i have uh, a little walk-in kitchen and you know it's a, it's a one it's a one and a half room studio. And right. I thought, you know what? I never used a stove. I've never used the sink. I'm going to build a countertop over both of those. And I don't need the refrigerator. So I'm sort of getting a little bit of space by turning the kitchen into a little mini uh What a good workshop. idea. Yeah. yeah so. Well, if you ever want to come out here and... Use the basement for anything. Somebody has a great name for the studio in the chat yes. room. Cat Butt Studios. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like it. So what is so knock on wood, cross your fingers. Now, this is actually if if this studio was not just two blocks away, yeah. you would like this. Now it's not it, it's one of the few times where I'm doing a service, not a gadget. Okay. And I went to uh, I went to wired uh, Wired magazine and website once a year at Christmas time, holiday time, does the Wired store. And I think one year Dane came in and we shot some video at the at the Wired store. And the Wired store is just opening this weekend and it's going to run through the day after Christmas. And you don't buy things there. You you see new gadgets. You meet people who started services. And then if you want to buy something, they have wiredstore.com online and you can buy stuff there but i met this lady who started a new service called we go look dot we com go go look look dot com. com now Leah, this is a great idea so you don't live, live in petaluma right and you live in the midwest and you're thinking of moving to petaluma how would you know what it looks like yes <laughs> yes exactly so 
the the initial little go see is it's just forty nine bucks, and for that they go. Wait, they mean they actually what, go and look at it? Leo, I the, the woman and uh, her name is Robin, and I'll find her last name. It took her a year to find seven thousand people that she interviewed in a lot of the major cities. So they've hired go. thousands of lookers. Of lookers. And, and like she told me, the, the, the lookers are all independent contractors who, you know, do this as a side job. And, and they'll, you'll say, you know, this guy on Craigslist advertises this car and he has photos there. How do I know these photos weren't taken before a car wreck? This is brilliant. Yeah, I, th I thought it was too. And so, so for they you buy will, something on eBay or Craigslist, they will look at it. Do they take a picture? Ten pictures. Uh, the $49 charge, they'll go look at it. They'll measure it, tell you what the condition is, is compared to what, to what someone else said, uh, and take ten photos. Or you can pay an extra $20, and they'll shoot video for you. Uh, I think it's a great idea. I said to the woman, this is, this is really a great idea. Now, they have one other facet. I don't know how they plan that on this is how this is going to work. Imagine this, Leo. So you've met this attractive young lady online in a different city like Houston. And you're thinking, God, before I fly to Houston, how do I know this isn't a picture she shot 10 years ago? Right. So I, I don't know what this lady's reaction is going to be when we go look called up and says, <laughs> can we meet you um, before at, Mr. At, Bartolo would love to meet you, but he's asked us to take pictures of you yes, before. Yes, and see if you have body odor. And May we yes. sniff you? We'd like to. <laughs> <laughs> can we have a conversation to see if you're really... Uh, they can't capture the scent yet, but it'd be good if they could like take a, a test bad. tube and wave it in front of her and... Put the stopper in and said, we've sent you this sample. Yeah, but I think it's a great idea for, you know, uh, for me, if I'm looking at a boat, yeah, I may want to eventually go out and see the boat in person. But for 49 bucks, if someone would go to the marina yeah, and take some pictures of the boat the way it is now, I could go, you know what? This is really in sad shape compared to what he right. told me. But I, I see the photos and I go, you know what? I am going to go to to this marina in another state and check it out because the we go look people sent me a photo that was shot yesterday and i think it looks pretty good you know where i think it'd be really good uh, there's a a site that people are using like crazy now called airbnb have you heard of that no it's very popular uh, sarah lane of course she's very hip she, she she told me about it but people use this to find places to stay so uh, if you're traveling, you go on Airbnb, and, and it's not an exchange, but uh, people list on here. It's kind of a Craigslist for apartments, bed and breakfasts, hotels, condos. And you can see, and, you, and it's very affordable. Anyway, she's used it to find places uh, as she travels. And, but wouldn't it be good if you could use this in combination with... yes. We go pee, or we go look, or whatever it is, and uh, and then you would know ahead of time if it yeah. really if it matches up to the picture. Exactly. Well, the coffee before how much was that coffee? Three hundred and forty dollars a pound. Exactly. The cat. Butt have coffee. somebody take a uh, a picture of where the coffee really comes from of Just the cat's sure. uh, yeah yeah you got it you got so it so that you know it actually did come from there. Yeah, exactly. Then I would know not to order it. <laughs> maybe, maybe that would be a good excuse to stay. I was well, hoping it was a fraud. Well I was away. hoping it was a fraud. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, I was hoping you were lying when you said this came out of a cat's behind. But apparently you were uh, you were telling the truth. Yeah. <clears throat> and, we uh, go look. And I, I don't like need close-ups. Thank you very much. I like that idea. We go look dot com. You know, I've uh, that's what we kind of we do with our advertisers. Don't you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we try and you kind of use them sometimes, we too. Yeah, we try. So, and then so that's why uh, we don't do ads for a lot of companies. We only do ads for companies that we have actually used. I'll give you an example, MailRoute, and I've talked about this a lot. I've been using for six years to get the spam out of my Leoville email. If you run your own server, now if you're using Gmail or Yahoo Mail or Hotmail, they have their own anti-spam. You probably don't need MailRoute. But if you run your own server, uh, you don't want to buy a big expensive email filtering program 
uh, you just want somebody to take care of the spam for you, I can highly recommend MailRoute. So I have my own server, leoville.com. Here's what I did. I just started this doing this in 2004. Tom Johnson, the guy who wrote it, I met him, uh, believe it or not, I met him at family camp. He and his family were there. I was there with my family. And he kept disappearing. And I said, where, where do you keep going? He says, oh, you know, I'm writing this program, and I'm going into the cabin to work on it. Now, he's, he's actually pretty famous. He wrote FrontBridge, which Microsoft bought. They renamed uh, Microsoft Exchange Hosted Services, so a very big product. So he's, this guy knows email. Uh, and I said, well, what is the product? He said, well, it's an anti-spam product. I said, well, I'd love to try it. So all I did was I changed. Now, if you don't know what this means, this isn't the product for you, but I changed the MX record. It's part of my DNS records. So what happens is mail, incoming mail to leoville.com, it sees the MS record, MX record in the DNS and says, oh, wait a minute, I go to mail route. It goes to mail route. Mail route, it's kind of like primary filtering for sewage. It filters out all the most egregious spam. <laughs> and then the mail continues on its way back to Leoville. So in other words, I don't see the spam, the viruses, or anything. I only see the, the cleaned mail. Now let me tell you how good this is. Last year, last 12-month period, uh, I received 1 million messages came to leoville.com addresses. My personal address, my mom uses Leoville, my, my daughter, my wife. 1 million spam messages. By the time it went through mail route... 30,000 were left. 970,000 spam messages were stopped by mail route. They didn't ever hit my server. That's amazing. That's, that's a lot of traffic that I didn't have to put up with. It's a lot of garbage I didn't have to see. Maybe I could have filtered it locally. I do use local spam filters. Mail route is fantastic. The other thing I love about mail route, and this is one of Tom's design goals, is basically zero false positives. It's actually one in 250,000. That means very, very little mail will get, four messages a year maybe get blocked when they shouldn't be. Now, I check. They have a spam store you can check. And I, when I first started MailRoute, I would check every week. I'd say, well, you know, because I've used other anti-spam solutions. All right, what did I miss this time? Never had a false. I could never. I mean, there was always bad spam. By now, I don't even check it. It's just automatic. I don't even think about it. There are some other advantages. It stops virus attachments. It also so it's very uh, handy if your servers are unreliable because their servers are 99.999% uptime. Uh, again, this guy knows what he's doing. So the mail will go to them. If they can't get it to you, they just hold on to it and then spool it out. They call it mailbag service. Spool it out as your server comes back online using smart algorithms so your server isn't overloaded. It smooths out a lot of the email hassles. I love MailRoute. And I, and I think if you... Now, again, this is a specialized product. But if you're running your own server, a lot of law offices, doctor's offices, for instance, for privacy reasons, don't want Gmail or somebody to handle their mail, you really ought to know about MailRoute.info. Go to MailRoute.info. When you sign up, Twit listeners get 10% off for life. They do have uh, non-commercial and, uh, you know, individual accounts as well as business accounts. Mostly it's businesses, universities. University of Georgia uses it. A lot of big businesses. But uh, they, by popular demand, they have set up uh, individual accounts. Uh, prices start at $2 per user per month, but the more you use it, the less it costs per user. Uh, there's a $20 per month minimum, although they waive that for individual consumers, and uh, you get 10% off for life if you go to mailroute.info. Secure, easy, no spam. Uh, this is one I could just recommend. I've been using it for six years and I love it and I tell you what when man when I've accidentally changed my MX record I did this a couple of times and all that spam came flooding in I just thank my lucky stars I'm using mail route mail route dot info give it a try <laughs> Are you frozen in time and space? I'm voguing. Oh, okay. Okay. Strike a pose. Uh, a letter writer, Joe A. from Boston, Massachusetts, writes in Nepisode. Oh, that's a good word. Nepisode? Nepisode. Nep <laughs> that's when you get your cousin to do the show? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <exactly. laughs> in Nepisode 1218, where you talked about the Cool Picks S. 
1100 PJ, your letter writer mentioned the awful buzz you hear when you hook up a music player with an audio cable, the kind with the two mini headset jacks. Well, I want to share a potential fix for that problem. When I switched to a cable that, have a, that had a ferrite core at each end, the buzz went away. The ferrite cores are those little things that look like yes, little yes, barrels yes. that you find on lots of computer cables. I guess they filter out the noise. They filter out I RF love, specifically, yeah. Yeah. I love the show, so I guess my life is worse. Uh, uh, oh, and here's $2 for Leo's tip jar. So I guess you got oh, some money there, too. Oh, he sent yeah. it to you? Joe. I'll never see it again. I hope you enjoyed the falafel. <laughs> the falafel. Uh, Joe A. Boston M A. Thank you, Joe. Yeah. No, those are uh, those are ferrite cores are very useful if you have RF issues. We use them in the studio uh, for microphones, so there's no buzz on them. Uh, use them all the time. Yep. Excellent. Excellent. That's it. Nothing That's more it for me. Nothing more to say. No. No. All right. Well, I, 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 have, I have something more to say. What? I'll be here. D A I L Y. It's own gravy. Yeah.